Hey, I'm Mike, welcome to Need It Make It. So I am finally back on the upgrades for the Ender 3 version 3 model KE printer. And in this video, the upgrade we're working on also applies to the SE printer as well. So there are two issues that we're looking to solve. And one is that the posts seem to vibrate a little bit too much. It's even more when there is a spool mounted to the top. And the second is that the posts are not squared to the bed or to the base. Mine is not off by very much, but some of you have reported that yours are off by quite a bit more. So in this video, we're gonna fix all that by getting a little bit inventive. So stick around. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure that you do. The goal is 100,000 subscribers by 2025 and we are growing fast, but not quite fast enough to hit that mark. And every subscription helps. In a previous set of videos, I showed how to add these heat set inserts into the base. And for today's upgrade, the 10 at the back are gonna be needed. So that video is gonna be up there if you have not seen that one already. This is the vibration that I was talking about. And with the movement of the massive steel plate below the bed and whatever parts you're printing as well, and also the bed itself and the spool mounted on top, this likes to shake around quite a bit. And I just think it needs to be far more solid. And there are a lot of ways to do this, but in this video, we're gonna to try to make a fully 3D printable solution. And to do that, I've separated the post support arms into two big pieces, and I've also added an extra shorter inner arm. To connect everything to the printer, I wanted this to look like it belongs as much as I can. So rather than sticking something on the top, I've stuck something down under. The upper adapters and lower adapters for the post have a cutout, and that fits snugly around the post profile. These are all of the parts that are needed for this project. These parts are all printed in PETG carbon fiber and the arms are made from brick red and the adapters are made from Titan gray. And I have used two printers to print these parts and I have not used my Ender 3 version 3 model KE because I had to take it apart and put it back together for this project. So I used the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and I've used the Ender 3 version 3 metal frame printer. So we have heat set inserts in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can get away with six millimeter heat set inserts in here. It's probably a little bit better to use five millimeter, but I only have the six millimeter, so I'm gonna go with that. Probably a good idea to run a tap through if you had the kind of mess on the inside that I had. Come time to put these together. So I am gonna glue the joints and that gluing is not required, at least it shouldn't be, but it really depends on how tight these come together for you. Mine could be a little bit tighter because these were kind of the test run. So I have snugged up the joints a little bit and I'm gonna be using polyurethane because polyurethane works well with PETG. But if you ever have one of these tips that is completely dried up, I'm not sure why this didn't have tape on it. You can take a heat gun to it, soften it up and it should expel that plug. So the way that this joint works is that this dovetail is tapered. The corresponding piece is also tapered. So it goes in easy. And as you put it further and further forward, it gets tighter and tighter until it snaps into place.
So I'm gonna let that glue set for a little while. Now each of these has a hexagonal cutout, which corresponds to these little guys here. And there's two different styles of these. There's a central hole and there's an offset hole. And this gives a little bit of flexibility on the adjustment. Wherever you position this, it's gonna change the distance away from the other holes. I'm going to go ahead and just insert the centered one into each. If they're a little bit snug, then you can always just take a bit of sandpaper to them. And these fit perfectly. We need to take the top rail off and I've already gone ahead and taken the spool holder off and I've disconnected the filament runout sensor as well. That's six screws. Just be careful, there are some very thin washers in here that you'll want to keep an eye on. I've already lost mine once. Okay, we can disconnect the belt. Well, I don't know exactly what happened over here. <clears throat> As I was saying, I will mount this bracket on. <laughs> oh, look at that. Terrible. Brutal. This side looks good. Next, we can deal with this bracket at the bottom. This needs to come off. This side is pretty well the same as the other side. Take the screws out of the bottom. There are additional screws here, two here, and we have to remove this lower connection to the motor as well. This side does not have a bearing in the bottom, so it can just go in as is. So I have decided to redesign the motor mount side, and the reason is because at the bottom there, there's a bearing housing that is not used for this side. There should be a recess here for the flange that is on the motor. And I did not account for that. And there is the new motor side bracket. You can see the bottom does not have that housing for the bearing anymore. And while I was at it, I adjusted the hole depth so that we can use the original screws as well. I thought I'd do something experimental on the bottom because I needed some support. So I built this piece right into the model. Now we have a little bit of an issue. We have this ability for the left and right hand sides to go their own way. So what I'm gonna do is I have these one, two, three blocks. I'm gonna 
set this down on here, and that way we get it parallel to the bed or really close to parallel to the bed. This side seems a little bit more solid and I think that is just because of the way that this is mounted directly to the base. On this side, we don't have that extra support because this is mounted to the motor. We are nearly ready to put this thing together, but unfortunately I don't have the right length of M5 bolt. This is about 26 millimeters. I've already used it for a previous job and it needs to be between 20 and 21 millimeters long. So I'm gonna cut this and do one more as well. These are M3 by 20 millimeter. And I'm not gonna tighten it, I'm just gonna snug it down. Now we can add the M5 lock nuts. And now we can add the M5 lock nuts. And now we can add the M5 lock nuts. And now we can add the M5 lock nuts. And now we can add the M5 lock nuts. So the way that I would do this is I would connect all of the lower sections and leaving the upper section. And then you can just play around with the position of the upper section and try and dial it in exactly how you want it. On this side, it looks as though the hole is not quite lined up where I want it. So I can use one of those offset hexagonal inserts. So I have mine pretty much where I want it. And it just so happened after that adjustment to the inner arm that this worked out really well. And there's one last little thing that I did not account for, and that is when the printer is in its lowest position, the wheel on the motor side will collide with that bottom bracket. So I need to add a little bit of clearance for that. I just noticed that the pulley on this side and the pulley on this side were at different heights. This one is up a little bit higher and gave more clearance to the top of this bracket. And this one was just a little bit too low and the belt was rubbing. So you can just loosen off these two set screws, raise that up. Well, I had a closer look and I think I figured out what went wrong here. This hole is from the frame. This is for bolting the bottom panel on. And I use that as my reference point for these blocks and obviously this side and this side are not identical like I thought they were. So that is the cause of that. So these are off by about six millimeters. Pretty easy fix. I'm just gonna shift them over by six millimeters and get rid of the original holes. There will be left and right, but there was already a left and right anyway.
And there we have it. I think it looks pretty good. And it's not only far more stable, but the gantry is square to the build plate now. And if this is something you'd like to do yourself, the files are available for download for free, and I will put a link down there below. Thanks to my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And if you would like to help support this channel as well, there will be a link down there below. Take care, everybody. We will see you on the next one. Well, let's see how we did. So I've got the spool mounted up top. Not a lot of movement, that's for sure. It feels a lot more solid than the last time.